locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. What's up, everybody? This is the integrator, Malik Bosidi, a.k.a. Bosidi Two Belts, one half of your Pro Wrestling 2.0 Tag Team Champions and your Open Weight Champion at Go Wrestle. Malik Bosidi is a name that has just been ringing all over the place there. Down in Florida, and that's really like the, the epicenter of the wrestling world, so to speak, right now. How important is it is it for you, especially you know the beginning of your career here, to start off in such a hotbed area? Florida in itself, uh, like you said, is very known for wrestling. Definitely a hotbed. It's important to me because of the networking and connections that I've made. Uh, I met a lot of known names in the business. Got to work plenty of good matches with people in the business that's just as hungry as well. It's just motivation to be here. I mean, we have NXT here in Orlando. We have AEW that's based out of Jacksonville and, and Florida as well. So, I mean, you said it. <laughs> Florida is a hotbed. Here you are. You, know, you broke into the business. First and foremost, I mean, you're you're a black man in pro wrestling, and especially in the year 2020. We just hit the new year, which is so fantastic. Traditionally speaking, we haven't seen that many black folk in wrestling, especially being featured. Do you feel any of that responsibility to, to be somebody who can continue to kick in the door, shine a light, do what you can to make the path a little easier for whoever's going to be coming up after you? I definitely do. Ever since you know, I broke into the business about two years ago, I took it upon myself to represent our people, and more specifically my people that's from the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean. It's just a goal. I have to let the world know us, you know. I have to bring recognition to us, let us know that there's athletes from the islands as well, especially those. And that's something else. I mean, you talk about the West Indies. i got to be honest with you. I, I can name maybe two handfuls of, of pro wrestlers uh, off the top of my head who come from the West Indies, and that's really not that much. I'm talking about over the past 35, 40 years here. Right. Have you run into – many uh, wrestlers from the West Indies uh, since you've been in the business here? I've ran into a good amount, of which is they're exceptional wrestlers. And some of them are from Jamaica. Big shout out to y'all. I have much love for Jamaica. You know, in the Caribbean itself, Puerto Rico itself, you know, which produces a lot of uh, top-tier talent. Um, but my my thing is, is breaking into the business is as good as those two places are for producing workers in the business, I want to shine a light into the southern part of the Caribbean, which would be St. Lucia, you know, St. Kitts, Martinique, Trinidad, you know, Dominica, St. Thomas, the USBI actually in the whole. Uh, we have no professional wrestlers per se, uh, and I may be mistaken, but we have no professors from those from that region, and that's why I personally took it upon myself to represent us. Sure, and that's a noble cause, without a doubt. You know, we we just celebrated not only Thanksgiving here in America, but we also had Christmas from all over the world, New Year's. Talk to me about the cuisine, right? If you, oh. if you're back home and you <laughs> and you're with the family there, talk to me about it. What's what's on the table uh, oh, man. for the Bosini household <laughs> there? What's on the table for the holiday feast? Oh, really? you have like salt fish, you know, rice and peas, some ackee there, you know, definitely a lot of uh, vegetables and stuff. The beautiful thing about the Caribbean and the food and the cuisines is uh, is mainly grown and not really altered with the GMOs. So we really get a, how can I say that, a hearty good meal, you know? Oof, now you got me thinking about it. <laughs> oh, man. It's just delicious all around, you know? Sure, plenty sure, of, sure. And you know, of, I, I uh, speak from experience here. My mother is from Jamaica, so I know exactly what you mean. In fact, okay. I'll tell you something uh, interesting here, Malik. 
my mother, the the food that she can eat without any trouble is Jamaican food, just like you said, the ackee and saltfish, the, the rice and peas, the rice and beans, uh, breadfruit, you name it. Yeah. You know what I mean? She can eat that curry goat and, and oxtail. She can eat all that stuff all day long and not have a problem. But it's when she starts messing around with some of this processed foods and what have you, that's when, you know, her stomach Definitely. can get a little upset. And she feel a little sluggish, what have you. As a person who is a, a star athlete like yourself, how important is it for you to maintain a, a, a well-balanced diet, especially when it comes to, like you said, food that has not been gem- genetically modified? It's, it's of the utmost importance. I say besides rest, diet is one of the most important things to uh, be concerned with in the business. So dieting from down there, it's really good because the food is giving you natural energy. It doesn't, like, make you suck or anything like you said previously. But – up here, you know, I I have to be a little more careful. So I, I like me personally, I tend to stay away from fast food, even when I'm on the road. Like I'd go to like a local Walmart or even a Seven Eleven, I could find one and find like some fruits or vegetables to eat to maintain myself. Uh, very rare that I stop at a fast food. Uh, one recommendation though is never have a full stomach before going into a match. That is one of the most scariest things to do. <laughs> Um, there's, I'm sure there's, there's probably plenty of stories circulating around how there's been accidents before in the ring. So, um, that actually goes with dieting as well. You know, knowing the proper foods to eat, um, before you go into the match, even during training, you know, um, but to stay away from it, it helps you with your physique, even mentally also, you know? You hear that, folks? You didn't know what you were going to get. You, we're talking to uh, Malik Basidi, literally one of the hardest free agents on the market right now in the independent wrestling scene. You thought we were just going to talk wrestling. The man's explaining dieting tips and, and, and yes, fresh man. food and things of that nature. That's good <laughs> stuff, bro. That's good stuff. Appreciate it. What goes along with that? Because you talked about mental health as well and the importance of that. So we're talking like a mind, body, and spirit sort of thing. Yes. You're, you're a guy that is new to the business. Uh, you're just starting off in wrestling. You've got a couple of years' experience, what have you. But you're in you're in one of the best places. I mean, you're in Florida, which is great. You're part of a group, Culture yes, Inc. Talk to me about this group here and, and the importance of having other people uh, to lean on as you start this journey in pro wrestling and kind of figure out who's who and what's what and what's best for you uh, from a wrestling and business standpoint. Talk to talk to me about linking up with some folks and being part of a group there. Being part of a group is one of the best things to do, especially starting off in the business. Um, it's You get to cipher a lot of uh, ideas between us. Now, Culture Inc., which is consistent of myself, the integrated Malik Bosidi, the prodigy of flight, Eli Knight, and then Nick Holliday, which is the team manager. Those guys, being on the road with them and and just doing shows with them, it helped me a lot because where I lack at, they may be the strength and vice versa. Whereas if you break into the business alone, you kind of have nobody to, re- I mean, you have obviously the vets and everybody else that would now, you know, that would want to uh, give you all a branch if you reach out, you know? Um, but just a fact alone is just, it's fun. You know, you're on the road together, you know, you end up having stories, you know, um, it's just, it's just different. Yeah. I mean, I can't really say, say, I can really, I can't really compare it from a single competitor standpoint. Um, because much as I work single matches, I work that many more tag matches, but I will definitely say that to anybody who wants to go into the business, find a stable. It would definitely help you get along. Um, a quote I do go by, which I, um, which I do appreciate people is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. That's deep. That's deep. And, and it definitely makes a lot of sense because it's just like, you know, it, if you take one finger, there's only so much damage you can do with one finger. But I mean, a fist, I mean, hey, <laughs> you sure, know what I mean? Walls. It's the sum of all parts, so to speak. So 
that's that's good stuff there. That really is. Now, if you were to describe, because I, you know, on this show, Duke Loves Wrestling, we have folks from all over the world who listen. More importantly, we have bookers and owners of various promotions all over the world, including down there in Florida. What are they going to get if they have a Malik Bosito on their card? What can they expect? Why would should they invest in you, bring you to their area, and put you out there in front of the fans, see what you can do? What are they going to get? I mean, they're going to get a whole, a whole package. I mean, in the nickname alone, the integrator, you know, it wasn't a mistake um, taking on that moniker, you know. I've integrated a lot of wrestling styles in my in my repertoire. You know, I wrestle American Cruiserweight. I wrestle Lucha Libre at times, you know. I can wrestle as a technician. Um, powerhouse I'm still working on, you know. Got to get away for that one. <laughs> but um, I just bring many different styles with me when I go to a promotion. Um, they get a workhorse out of me. You know, I'm I'm gonna no matter what show it is, no matter how many people's in the crowd is, when I go do a match, I bust my ass in that match. I apologize for using that word, but <laughs> I um I really show out in that match and give it my all. So when promoters get me, they get the package, I should say. <laughs> you hear that? You are going to get the package. If you bring Malik Bosidi onto your card there, folks, that's for sure. In fact, Malik, tell everybody how they can reach out to you. What is the best way to find you online, not only the fans, but, again, the bookers out there, if they want to bring uh, an exciting high flyer who can also bring it to the mat as well, tell them how they can get more Malik Bosidi in their life. You can reach me at either uh, Instagram or Twitter. Luckily, they have they both have the same handle. It's MB Integrator, which is M as in Mike, well, I'll just say M as in Malik, B as in Bocidi, I-N-T-E-G-R-A-T-O-R. And you can also find some of my uh, matches online on YouTube if you type in Malik Bocidi. That's for sure, folks, and I can speak from experience. I mean, Malik has a, a very well-done YouTube page. A lot of great stuff on there, including uh, some former WWE stars that he's been in the ring with. Uh, some of your mic work is out is on that channel. Just really, really good and complete, which, you know, for a guy who is just starting off in the business, the fact that you have such a professional, I, I'll call it a resume, really, because that's what a YouTube is. You have video packages and what have you all rolled up into one in that spot. Kudos to you for that. that. That shows that you're taking your business very seriously, and you, you mean it, which, you know, unfortunately is just not enough folks like yourself. So I, you stick out like a sore thumb, but in a good way, and, and that's great, man. But, but before I let you go, all right. tell me, when you're, when you're standing in the middle of that ring and you got the crowd out there, and, 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 you know, the lights, they're, they're beaming down on you. It's hot in the building. I mean, you're in Florida, what have you. What is going through your head? What, what are the emotions that you're feeling when you're in that ring, in that moment, doing this thing that you've had a dream about doing and that you actually are, are moving forward with and, and living? What's going on inside of Malik Bosidi in that moment? It's a mixture. Um, I must be open with you. Um this nervousness <laughs> uh, mixed with ambition and uh, dedication. When I look at everybody in the crowd, I don't think, hey, I'm here with them. No, they're here for me. You know, so with that mentality, I just go full steam and just give the show that I know I can give. It is so refreshing when you speak to young talent and you can tell that they get it. Right? Malik Bosidi gets it. Hardworking, talented, understands that this is a business. And because of that, he's very serious about putting out material. Right? Check out his YouTube channel and you see matches with people that you know, some you don't know, but you see content. It's easy to understand why this guy is taking off. And I'll tell you right now, Go Wrestle, which is a, a promotion down in Florida that I pay a lot of attention to, 
They got some great stars. Some of them have been on the show. They've done it again. They found another future superstar there, Malik Posidi. Guy's just, he's, he's solid, man. Real solid. Got a lot of time for him, and I, I thank him for joining us. And I look forward to seeing where his career is going to go because I have a funny feeling that Malik Posidi is going to be a name that we're going to continue to be talking about for years to come. So mark my words there, folks. That's for sure. Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling. The show about the top stories in pro wrestling and everything else. That's right. That's right. The top stories in pro wrestling. Huh? A guy like Malik Pasidi, who's an up and coming star, just won a championship in, in Go Wrestle. That's that's a top story, man. A lot of folks don't realize Florida is a is a pro wrestling hotbed. And there's a lot going on down there, all over the state. But the closer you get to Tampa, because you have NXT down there and so many other promotions, they they have different developmental indies down there. Everybody passes through Florida, man. Everybody does. And with the tax situation down there, it's a great place to live. So many wrestlers live down there. So many folks who are breaking into business, they move down there. I love talking to talents who are based down in Florida and Texas you know, even folks are in, in China or the UK, what have you, yeah, sure. But when you're in these wrestling hotbeds, places where it's a lot easier to get noticed and you're able to make something of yourself, make a name for yourself, you're winning championships and you're turning heads in such a competitive environment. It's really good stuff, man. It's energizing, right? Gets me pumped up. Speaking of energizing, I, I'm, I'm drinking a smoothie. And let me tell you something, man. Navitas Organics. I, I know I've, I've told you about the, these folks before. It's a new year. A lot of you, hopefully, you're still maintaining your New Year's resolutions and you're keeping yourself healthy or at least trying, right? Navitas Organics, they have this, this maca powder. And I've been putting it in my smoothies, right? I'll give you a quick tip. You ready for this? I am going to give you the recipe for my smoothie of the week. How about this? My smoothie of the week, right? Utilizing the Vita's Organics maca powder. So, of course, I, I do a, a teaspoon of the Navitas Organics maca powder because you don't need much more than that. Stuff's pretty strong. Gets the job done. It's pretty strong. So I do a teaspoon of that. I do mango so first of all i gotta dice it up throw it in the freezer overnight dice up a a two banana throw that in the freezer overnight right i want this stuff to be frozen when i throw it in the in the blender that's right that's right so then you take those frozen you throw them in the blender do four sliced strawberries a cup of blueberries a little bit of non-fat yogurt. Could be, I don't know, three tablespoons. It's a little bit, not too much. And you're ready for this? Your favorite iced tea. Make a picture of your of, of any kind of tea that you like, right? Make a picture of that and then throw it in the in the refrigerator overnight. You can use agave, sugar, sugar substitute, whatever, whatever sweetener you want to use. Make that your liquid base for the smoothie. And then you pour that in there with all the other stuff that I just told you. And then you're ready for this? You don't see this one coming. Teaspoon of cinnamon. Helps with the blood pressure, trust me. Helps with the blood pressure. That's right. You blend that sucker up real good. Blend it up. When you feel like it's done blending, blend it for another 30 seconds. You want to get that really good there. You pour that sucker out, stick a straw in that cup, and you take that first sip, and all you're going to say is, ah, delicious, delicious. And I'm telling you, if you if you do that maca powder, it's going to give you that kick, that boost that you need. And because you're using tea, especially if you're using a tea that is caffeinated, you'll get a little, 
a little energy on top of energy there. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Now, Vita's Organics, you can find their stuff, Walmart, Target, CVS, wherever. They make a whole line of great things there. But the marker powder, I'm all over that, man. Throw it in my smoothies, throw it in my yogurt, throw it in my ice cream, whatever. That's my jam right now. Jam. That's right. That's right. Listen, we're going to keep this ball rolling here because stop the presses. I have an interview with someone that you may or may not have heard from in a while. Okay. He currently goes by the name Reverend Jeremiah, Jeremiah Constantine. But you may know him as the former manager of the primetime players. Abraham Washington. Remember that guy? He was let go by the WWE because he made a joke, uh, Kobe Bryant joke that didn't fall too well there. He has an incredible story. And we're going to get into this in a way that has never been told before. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is former WWE superstar Abraham Washington, now known as Reverend Jeremiah Constantine. And I'm in the house, ready to talk the talk and walk the walk. So whatever we're going to do, let's do it. Yes, sir. First and foremost, Reverend. Oh, my goodness. Happy New Year to you. How are you feeling, brother? Man, I'm feeling fantastic. Happy New Year to yourself. Happy New Year to all the listeners. You know, uh, I'm fantastic. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, hey, man, it's it's a pleasure. And, and you know something, I, I've been um, I've been trying to work on following your church there because I, I need some millions <laughs> of dollars myself here. <laughs> and I know yeah, we you, all looking for that millions of dollars. <laughs> that, that millions of dollars. That's right, man. I know you yeah. preach that prosperity there. So hey, yeah. That's right. You know? Joel Osteen ain't the only one that can get that money. I'm trying to get it too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, trying to get on that Joel level. <laughs> That's, hey, hey, aren't we all? Aren't we yeah. all? Listen, man, it's really something special to have you on the line because Appreciate you are someone truly that has been an inspiration for so many folks. Not too long ago, you were all over WWE TV. I mean, yeah. Jesus, you, you even had your own a uh, talk show style thing on yeah. on ECW. Right? Yeah, 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 yes, sir. So it was almost like your own version of, of Piper's Pit, so to speak. The, yeah. I think it was called the Abraham Washington Show, right? Abraham Washington Show, yes, sir, with yes, uh, sir. WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And then you and then you were promoted because you did so well with that. Then suddenly you were on Raw and SmackDown, and you were managing um, the primetime players, right? Yeah, that is it. So it's just, it's fascinating to me because, again, in the pro wrestling business, there are so few black wrestlers who are being put in prominent roles. Yeah. And especially on primetime TV. Yeah. I mean, it is still <laughs> a struggle, man. I mean, it's getting yeah. a little better. <laughs> yeah. It well, I mean, a struggle. yeah, I mean, if you're not, uh, I hate to say it, but if you're not rapping, dancing, Chucking and diving and doing something, you know, silly, it's hard to get that time, man. Unless you're like super jacked like uh, Bobby Lashley. But, uh, yeah, I don't see too much of it. No, not at all. Not at all. And that's what made, you know, you so special seeing you on TV so much is because here you were, this, this highly intelligent brother who has a gift of gab, and people yeah. really responded to what you had to say, man. And it's yeah. special because it's like, well, damn, I think I can do that. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? Like you yeah. said, I may I may not ever be as jacked as Bobby Lashley, but this dude yeah. is clever as hell. He's using his mind, which is still yeah. entertaining the folks, and is bringing them in. And that's why you kept moving up. I'm not the type of person to just want to bash the WWE continuously. You know, I respect them. They gave me the opportunity and and, uh, and a bit of a platform to do what I was able to do. So, and I'm grateful for that. But uh, looking back, uh, you know, I, I, there were some issues. But to anyone that I was able to inspire or to to, to make want to, to pursue a position or something in professional wrestling, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I could do that for them. 
Well, you, you certainly did. There, there's no two ways about it. I mean, there's a whole yeah. generation of people that saw themselves in you, you know, on yeah. a weekly basis on, on television, and it's just it's really something special. Um, Rev, we, we talked offline, and yeah. one of the things that I was very adamant about, and the reason why I wanted to bring you on the show, you were a controversial figure because... <laughs> Yeah, what that's surprise. my middle name, Jack. <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. You were somebody, once again, that, that was being featured so prominently because you were doing such a great job. You earned everything you got. It was nothing yeah. was given to you. You well, it was not. <laughs> absolutely deserved and earned all that you got. Yeah. And then there was one episode of Raw. Mm-hmm. There's a match. Kofi Kingston's in there. Mm. Prime. Primetime plays, Darren Young and, and, and Titus O'Neil. Mm-hmm. And you make a joke. <laughs> yeah. Something that you were paid to do, by the way. Right? Yeah. yeah. Gift the gab, funny guy, clever guy. This show is not, you know, some small-time show. It's a show that you could get a little edgy at times. That was the whole point. I'm sure the, these, these are directions being given here. Mm-hmm. But you make, a, you make a joke, and you mention Kobe Bryant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And things took a turn after that. Yeah, if I could say it how uh, how it happened, the shit hit the fan, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah sure. And got all over at least you, unfortunately. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. what, what was it that you said, man? What, what was it that you said? You know, it was, I, I was referring to Titus O'Neil. You know, it was a. Uh, uh, Titus O'Neil is like Kobe Bryant in the hotel room in Colorado. You know, he's unstoppable. And when I made the joke, I thought nothing of it. I, I thought I was fine. You know, I didn't read too much into it. Now, my reasoning behind making that joke was if Kobe Bryant had been convicted of rape, I wouldn't have made the joke, you know, because I, I felt like it would have been offensive, you know. But it was an alleged rape joke. Which, be, which, I mean, people draw the line, at, at, it's a gray area, but um, that was my line of thinking at the time. And I've mentioned before, <laughs> my previous podcast, you know, that I had pressure from uh, John Cena to to come up with, you know, more entertaining things to say on the mic, you know, during my time out there. So that was uh, one of the things I came up with, and unfortunately, <laughs> it backfired on me. Yeah, and it didn't take long to backfire at all either, huh? No, no, that was it was immediate, you know, immediate fire. You know, I walked back, you know, felt the heat, and uh, had to had a couple of meetings, and from there, you know, I was walking on eggshells to a certain degree, but uh, and then I do the Linda McMahon tweet, and same day I get a call saying I I was released. Now you said the Linda McMahon tweet. What was that? Oh, you didn't know about that one. No, no, sir. I, that, 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 oh, missed, I missed that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, after having made that joke, I, I feel like maybe I, I created an environment of uh, too much negativity surrounding the company with that joke. You know, and at the time, Linda McMahon was running for Senate. You know, so and I don't think she wanted that type of publicity, you know, a rape joke her company being associated with her, you know, that it was, it was too close, you know, and, but I sent out a tweet a couple of weeks later in support of Linda McMahon. You know, I was like, Hey, uh, I forget the exact tweet, but it, it was boiled down to vote for Linda, you know, and I put a couple of hashtags on it, vote or die and stuff like that. You know, it was a campaign run by P Diddy, you know, years before. And so I, I sent it out and, uh, Come to find out that I, I think that may may have been one of the things that contributed to me getting uh, released. Yeah, it was just a snowball effect, I think. Ooh, ooh, talk yeah. about a heat a heat seeking missile, so to speak. There, yeah, uh, buddy, I had it on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was tattooed, but it just came immediately. But that's life, man. Here's my question to you, Rev. Yeah. You done worked your entire career mm. to 
to make it to the number one pro wrestling promotion in the history of the business. Mm-hmm. Literally something that very few people are ever able to do for, for a million different reasons. <laughs> yeah. But you, you drove yourself and you, you managed to make it happen. Yeah. And not only did you get there, you ended up being one of the more important pieces in the company. I mean, they, they legitimately put the mic in your hand and featured you a significant yeah. amount. Yes, they did. Right. Yeah. And and for a black man, TV time. That don't come not, around very often. It don't come <laughs> around. So the fact that yeah. you were given as much as you were, well, you earned yeah. as much as you were, yeah. it, it truly was some, something uh, we hadn't seen too, too often. Yeah. Answer this for me, Rev. Yeah. When you were told that, you know, your your, your time with them is over, you know, they're not going to move forward with you anymore, what have you. What was that conversation like when you when you had to tell your loved ones? <laughs> well, I don't. I, is this is this a PG show? I'm sorry, I didn't ask before. No, brother, you you say whatever's on your mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, my first thought was, what the fuck? <laughs> Seriously. I, you know, it wasn't even about telling loved ones. I was in shock. I was in the car and I was sitting there like, what the, what the fuck did I just hear? I, it took me literally like, uh, an hour to register what had just happened. I'm thinking like I'm in an alternate universe. Like, am I dreaming? Uh, and then when it finally began to set in, you know, uh, that shock turned to anger. You know, because like you said, I, I put in so much time, you know, <laughs> people don't understand what it takes to get to that level. You Like you said, nobody's handing it out. Nobody's giving you those opportunities. You know, you have to earn those spots, whether it's uh, taking bumps in the ring, cut promos. There, there's things you have to do. There's levels to that you have to pass to get to that upper echelon in the company and to be able to, to do that. And I, I got there, not only once with the Abraham Weiser show, but twice making it back to TV with Raw to be with the primetime players. So, but to just have that, that rug pulled from under me like that, it, it, it sent me in a tailspin, man, when I just went on the Twitter rant and, uh, I just unleashed, you know, my frustration and anger on the company. And, uh, subsequently, you know, Everybody was retweeting and the WWE. They shut down my Twitter and everything like that. So it was a it was a hailstorm for a minute, but I made it through. Well, you sure did. What was that conversation like with the family, man? Because that you know, once once the anger sets in and you throw out your tweets and, and... no, it, it, you know, and it, once they uh they saw what was happening, you know, they saw my tweets and they realized what had happened. And I told them, you know, it was, every, everything was support, you know, and, and then they got angry with WWE as well, because it's like, well, we don't see what you did wrong. That Kobe Bryant joke, you know, that was made, that joke has been made on WWE TV before, you know, uh, you, uh, telling people to vote for Linda McMahon, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, everybody was just trying to find out what was this one thing that set it off for you to be released. I mean, you have, you've had people do <laughs> so much worse and still be with the company or, you know, get suspended or whatever, you know, but to just be outright fired for a joke or a tweet, you know, it was just everybody felt like it was unjust. And then I looked at the YouTube. Everybody was making videos. Uh, there's guys in the audience sign, rehire AW and this and that. <laughs> I think there was one video of a guy had his sign and WWE took the sign away. You know, so I was just like, hey, you know, people feel like, you know, WWE was being a bully at the time. And in my opinion, they were. But when you're working for a high profile company like that, you know, that's how it goes, man. Sure. There's no doubt about it. And, and you said a, a mouthful there. I mean, certainly there have been people who are drug addicts, and DUIs, <laughs> yeah. you know, alleged murderers and, and uh, all yeah, these other things. <laughs> and somebody's yeah. defecated in somebody's food before, and I think they're going oh. to the Hall of Fame. Um, yeah. People who have done some pretty nasty things. And, and you made a joke that I guess they felt was inappropriate, and so be it. Yeah. 
but yeah. they let you go, and it doesn't sound like they've called you back yet, um, which is really unfortunate, WWE, by the way. And let me just go on record in saying that. <laughs> that that's, that's disgraceful. Yeah, they, 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 I don't think they're fans of me at this point. I don't know if it's because of, you know, uh, the Twitter rant or whatnot, but uh, I, I've reached out to them. At, actually, I reached out to them uh, a couple of months back before I started the Reverend Jeremiah Constantine uh, persona, you know, letting them know what I was doing. And uh, and I, and I got to say, you know, I feel like you know, it's, it's not a big deal, but it is to me that they actually borrowed uh, my idea. And a couple of uh, a couple of different things that they're doing, you know. Uh, one right now being the whole Seth Rollins Messiah thing. I don't know if you saw the shirt, the new Seth Rollins shirt that they came out with, and the I think his pin tweet on his uh, on his Twitter account. Oh, with I him saw and, it. <laughs> Oh, you saw it? Yeah, with the same oh, glass and the light shining behind. Yeah. And I said, okay. Now that that was in my video package that I sent to them, you know, and. You know, so I said, okay, all right. You know, you, if you don't, you don't want me. You know, you want my ideas. I get it. Go ahead, take it. It's, it, it's apparently uh, obvious that you need it, so because you all aren't creating the proper content on your own. So if you want to borrow mine, go right ahead. That's something else, man. And, and hey, listen, at least hire the man and, and put him on your, your writing <laughs> staff because you sure could use that help as well. You made it to the top. You worked yourself all the way to the top, and then it was snatched away from you. Yeah. You didn't give up, though. I mean, let me tell you something. I, just a quick search online and looking at YouTube and, and seeing some of the things you've done, you had a whole – first of all, you, you talk about how Bobby Lashley has all these muscles and what have you. You're all <laughs> jacked up, brother. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I said it. You know, and, I, and I, the, I, I love the gym, the gym therapy for me, you know always worked out you know it's one of the things that initially got me hired with the company was being in great shape and uh so it's something that i've always done so yeah i'm just all talk you know you were the goat Uh, yeah yeah in uh, coastal championship wrestling ccw in uh in florida fort lauderdale florida or coral springs what have you. Yeah, I worked for uh, Pablo Marquez down there for a while. And I still do shows, you know. Uh, I'm thinking of possibly doing one uh, in February. But it's, uh, of course, uh, Jeremiah Constantine. So my priority right now, though, is my uh, comedy. Uh, I'm working on my material now before I hit the road um, in comedy uh, stand-up. So, yeah. Sure, and and listen, you definitely, that's one thing that you have down pat. Uh, Obviously, you're an excellent communicator, which is how I'm I'm okay. (laughs) No, you're an excellent communicator, man. That's why you made it to national TV, live TV. Yeah. lasted, you know, as strongly as you did and kept moving up. So this comedy thing that you have going on, you're always a a comedian anyway. You always (laughs) were very clever. But one of the things that I notice about your style and it's funny because Jim Ross often talks about pro wrestlers who are trying to do comedy and they're not funny. And it's like, <laughs> don't quit your don't quit your day job. If you're not funny, <laughs> yeah, you're basically, funny. don't even pick that <laughs> yeah. up. You know, you're yeah. funny, but you're yeah. funny because you know how to communicate. And every piece of comedy that I've ever seen from you on your YouTube or your Twitter or what have you, there's actually a message behind the joke. You're, you're making a, a social commentary. There's a, there's a point that you're getting at. It's not just for ha ha. You're making a statement which all the all the strong comedians in the world and at least I've ever seen, that was always the point. George Carlin, Richard Pryor, yeah. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> the point yeah. was social co- was social commentary, right? Yeah, basically, yeah. And using humor to get that message across, you know. It's easier to do it that way, you know, like that you attract more bees with honey, you know. And that honey is humor, you know, comedy, you know, as I stood up on a platform just hollering at people, you know, saying, do this, do that, or this is what I think, you know, nobody wants to hear that. But if you can draw them in with a, a punchline or two, you know, and they laugh, haha, they laugh and they think about it, like, oh, well, maybe, maybe it will affect them in, in some way other than just standing there yelling at a person. So if it makes you think, 
you know, some people respond, you know, they're they're cool with it. Some people be like, oh, that's I don't like that or this and that. You know, it's like, hey, well, as long as you think about it, that's all I ask. Sure, sure. And I know one of the things that is being passed around a lot, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the top story in wrestling over the past week was third-generation star Tessa Blanchard. Oh, yeah. Um, just won the Impact uh, World Championship there. She beat Sammy Callahan for that. But yeah. it has come out that a couple years back, not only has she been allegedly, folks, I want to get sued here, not only has yeah. she allegedly been very uh, mean and, and, and uh, accused of being a bully to her coworkers, other women in the business, but yeah. one wrestler in particular, Rosa La Negra, uh, allegedly, Tessa spit on her and called her the N word. Yeah. So you've addressed this, but you've <laughs> yeah. done it in a very clever way. You've done some comedy <laughs> skits where you've made some points. Yeah. Um, you know, the initial thing is to laugh, but then when you really it's like, well, damn, this dude's really saying something here. <laughs> hey, yeah. What, what do you think of that whole deal, there, man? And, and what motivated you to 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 do your skits about it because uh, out of all the things that you could be thinking about or talking about, you chose to really zero in on this and drop some knowledge on this issue here. Come from a a background of my my family being involved with civil rights, you know. Uh, my mother worked at the Dr. Martin Luther King Center for Nonviolence in Atlanta, Georgia. You know, at a young age, I met Coretta Scott King, Dr. King's wife. You know, and I've always had literature around. So I mean. The struggle of African American people in this country has always been something that has been at the forefront of my mind. So when I hear stories like that, I get pissed off to a certain degree. You, you would think we would be past that point in 2020 or even whenever it happened, 2018, whatever year. But I guess we're not. These things still occur and other than going out and grabbing somebody by the neck or trying to harm somebody because of them treating you wrong or abusing you verbally, my thing is I, I want to use humor to draw attention to this matter. It's a shame that that sister had to go through something like that. It was true, but uh, like you said, allegedly, I didn't know any other way how to address it, but in that manner. And uh, I did it a couple of ways. You know, uh, I put out the Name That Racist uh, game show which is on my YouTube channel, and also the the shocking uh, Tessa Blanchard interview <laughs> where I do the voiceover. You know, and it's just to, to show people, you know, that, okay, what if that was really the case with her as far as doing that interview? But the thing I did with the game show is to bring light to true things that have actually happened, you know. Ric Flair calling Teddy Long a nigger. You know, uh, Roddy Piper wearing blackface. You know, things like that. Just, you, you have to, some people don't know that stuff. And it's like, when you think about it, you're like, wow. You know, that's, uh, that's kind of shitty. As an African American, having to go through that and still have to see these people. And, and, and then the, the, the shocker, uh, Hulk Hogan, you know, using the, the N word and then being brought back. You know, it's just like, wow, okay. There's only so much you can take, but at this point, it needs to be addressed one way or another. So I'm just using my platform to, you know, make people conscious of what's going on. And uh, hopefully, like they say, a change will come. That's for sure. That's for sure. And I respect you for it because in reality, you could do something else. You could go along and get along. You could, you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a man. Yeah, yeah. You've had yeah, your support, I'm, but at the I same can't. time, you stand firm as a, as a man on your own, too. So it's not like, I mean, you're taking hits for doing this. Yeah, and and, and I'm okay with that. You know, I, I already took the, the biggest hit of all, <laughs> you know. So at this point, in my mind, I have nothing to lose, you know. I, I'm going to speak my truth, speak my mind. And, and live my life, you know. I don't want to. I'm not. I'm not out on a mission to just offend everybody and piss everybody off. That's not the case, you know. Although if I feel a certain way about an issue, I will address it according to how I feel it needs to be addressed. 
and hopefully, you know, we can come to some kind of agreement on it without having to punch each other in the face. <laughs> no, we'll get yeah. civilized, man. Because the issue is still going to be there after the punch in the face. So there's, there's exactly, to exactly. So let's sit down at the table. Let's work this thing out, man. You know, Tessa, if she said what she said, you know, my only thing, if she had come out and made an apology or something, you know, just if, if it did happen, the way she addressed it is like it happened, but nobody's perfect, and she just kept it moving. I'm like, what the fuck? No way. You know, if it happened, if she came out and said, okay, I'm sorry, I did whatever, blah, 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 and uh, I'm working to get better, blah, blah. at least that's a start. But then you got to lay low, you know. You just don't put a title on a person that just got accused of calling somebody a nigger. <laughs> like, what? You know, it's like, ugh, it's, it's just it's, it's rough. That's that's rough. And then you got to ask Very yourself, good. with Impact Wrestling, what are you communicating to the world? Exactly. What are you saying? It's like, do you, yeah. do you support that? Or are you basically, uh, I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I, I can't get too much into detail. I don't have all the details, so it's like, but it's a turn off. Definitely a turn off. You know, and I like Impact Wrestling. I, I watch it. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of their, their stuff. But that's just kind of like, uh, really? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> it's a strange move, so, that's for sure. It's a strange yeah, move. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. If they, had, if they had, like, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, please finish that. Finish that statement. No, 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 no. I'm saying if they had at least, you know, Change that match, you know. Give it some time to breathe. Let's let's find out what actually happened. You know, I think they had a press conference before, and she wasn't there. You know, for the pay per view. You know, it's like they're just trying to sweep it under the rug, hide it, and hopefully it'll blow over. You know, kind of thing, which I felt like was just like not the right move. If something happens, let's address it. Let's talk about it. Let's, let's let's clear the air. Let's get things straight so we can move on and be better people. But. That doesn't seem to be the case with them at this point. They just they they they're, they're keeping it stepping. Yeah, that's just strange. <laughs> Definitely strange, yeah. as, as you say, strange fruit. Huh? Uh, yeah, very strange. Tell us, Rev, if if anyone listening would like to check out your YouTube, if they want to reach out on social media, because your your Twitter man is hot. You always got something <laughs> going on on there that, that's. <laughs> entertaining in the YouTube as well. Let everybody know how they can reach you on social media. Yeah, well, uh, on Twitter, I'm at at Jeremiah Consta, C-O-N-S-T-A-3, the number three, at Jeremiah Consta 3. I'm on Instagram as well, at Constantine, And my YouTube channel is Reverend Jeremiah Constantine. I try to upload something on there uh, weekly, sometimes it's biweekly, you know, just uh, trying to keep... Uh, subscribers entertained and, and just mastering my craft so please check me out if you can before i let you go rev you got to tell me because yeah. this is this is the number one question on my mind and it's funny because a lot of folks when i let them know you're going to be on the show they they definitely wanted to know this yeah how did a man who would work so hard to achieve his ultimate goal and have it ripped away from him how do you still stand so firm and so strong with this all these years later, man? How did you manage to not allow that to break you? Okay, here's the thing. It did break me. <laughs> it broke me. It beat the shit out of me. When you hit rock bottom like that, one of two things are going to happen. You're going to lay down and die, or you're going to get the fuck back up and fight. And there was uh, something inside of me that says, I'm not going to stay down here. I'm going to get up and I'm going to fight. And after going through, you know, that, that whole thing, I chose that there's more inside of me that I feel I need to do, that I want to do. And that's what has carried me to this point today. You know, there, there's something I know I'm supposed to do and uh, – at this point, I am beginning the process of doing that. Yeah, this is just the, the beginning phase of it. There's uh, much more to come. And you can you can be one of the ones say, oh, well, he said he was going to do it, you know, and it started right here, you know. So you have proof of me saying that now before it happens. <laughs>
What an incredible story. And shout out Rev. I call him Rev. Jeremiah Constantine. Just a, a, a really good dude, man. Former Abraham Washington. Really good dude. First time I talked to him, we just connected real strong, man. Because, you know, when you, when you talk to somebody and you understand each other, like immediately, there's no nonsense. You just, I get this person. This person gets me. We're good. We can communicate, right? Real good dude. Hell of a story. So, it's it's crazy. Life is crazy. And you don't know what's going to happen next. All you can do, it's kind of funny because John Cena, you know, John Cena just started following me on, on Twitter, by the way, folks. John Cena just started following me on Twitter. It's pretty interesting. Shout out to Cena, fellow mass hole. He tweeted something out. He said, all you can do is do your best. And as simple as that sounds, it's the truth. Just do your best. And you may mess up, right? At least they're in the eyes of whoever is in charge. If you're not in charge, you may make a terrible mistake. Or you may make the greatest decision of all time. Whatever. Just do your best. Because I truly believe it'll all even out in the wash. And more often than not, you're going to come out on the other side the way that you should. If you do your best, if you do what you know is right. I believe in that. That's for sure. That's for sure. Listen, before I go, you know, like we touched upon a little bit, that Tessa Blanchard stuff, man. I'm going to take some more time and see how this develops because I have a lot to say about that. But I'm going to let it breathe for a second. You heard someone on the in the conversation with uh, Rev, but. I'm going to I'm going to ask you this question, though. Me as a black man. If I were to go up to someone of another race, if I would go up to, let's say, a Jewish person, and I spit on them, and I call them a racial slur, are there going to be people lining up and saying, hey, no one's perfect? Is that, are, are, is there going to be a line of people out there defend? Are you going to defend me and say that? Probably not, right? In fact, I'd probably be locked up, probably put me in jail. Label as an anti-Semite and all that good stuff, and rightfully so. There's no getting past stuff like that. You got to meet it head on and address it. And those who are guilty of doing such things need to own up to it. We can't get past it until you own up to it and you apologize don't claim growth you gotta actually demonstrate it I'm just gonna leave it at that for now but we're gonna we're gonna dig into this a little deeper next week that's for damn sure but I didn't want to take away from a topic that is near and dear to my heart as well rest in heaven soul man Rocky Johnson just found out that he passed away awful WWE Hall of Famer uh, really one of the top stars, especially when I was younger. Just a, a, a real amazing superstar. Worldwide recognized. Great guy. Ahead of his time, really, you know. He's the father of The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Shout out to the entire family and loved ones, and even all the fans who grew up with the soul man, Rocky Johnson. Just tough loss he was young too early 70s just you know you hate to see it but if we believe that there is a a better place after where we are today then hopefully that's where he's at right don't want to get too preachy or anything like that but I will say this folks I beg of you please just Use some some compassion, some common sense. Soul Man passed away. And some of you out there had the audacity to tweet The Rock. Hey, is it true your dad is dead? Come on. How insensitive 
can you be? I mean, that is just the lowest of the low. Come on. And what's crazy is, you know, especially somebody who has wrestled within the WWE at any time, they always do a tribute. They always put out a statement. Reach out to the WWE. Anytime I reach out to WWE, they respond, right? I can send them an email. I can call, go on social media, whatever. If I have a question, they answer my question. They'll answer yours too. As long as it makes sense and and you're being respectful, I guess, but come on. You don't need to, to tag family members. Is this true that your father is dead? That's just, come on. Come on. You, you would not want that to happen to you. So please don't inflict that kind of stuff on others. Clearly it's a traumatic time for the Johnson family and don't pile on, don't add to that trauma, please. Okay. I'm just going to leave it at that. And I, and I want to believe that it's an innocent mistake. People just kind of jumping the gun there and not thinking that happens. We all are guilty of our moments, myself included, especially I'm not perfect, but I'll tell you right now, <laughs> I just hope, and I'm asking just, you know, use better judgment, please. So again, soul man, Rocky Johnson, Heading up to that great big ring in the sky. Listen, brother, we'll see you on the other side. Until next week, for everyone, uh, be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. I'm getting choked up here just talking about the soul, man. Forgive me. Take it away, Tony Schiavone. This is Tony Schiavone, and we're desperately out of time on Duke Love Wrestling.